Agriculture is the prime moving force of Indian economy. You know who said that? Well, this line actually featured in the 10th five-year plan. The period of that plan was 2002 to 2007. So in 10th five-year plan, we realized that agriculture sector is the base on which the entire structure of Indian economy lies. All right. Before 10th five-year plan, all the other nine five-year plans believed that Indian economy actually depends on industry. So till the ninth five-year plan, we believed that industrial growth is extremely, extremely, extremely important for economic growth. That is why till ninth five-year plan, all the policy makers of India actually favored or focused more on industry and they focused less on agriculture. But in the 10th five-year plan, policymakers realized that agriculture is the base of Indian economy. As a matter of fact, industry, industrial growth lies on agriculture. Without agricultural growth, industry would suffer. And without industrial growth, economy on the whole would suffer. Now, the question that must be arising in your minds would be that how is agriculture more important than industry? Logic says that industrial growth actually decides economic growth. All the big economies of the world are actually industrial powerhouses. So how can agriculture be more important than industry? Well, there are many reasons for it, but we'll be focusing on two major reasons. Those two major reasons are as following. The first reason is that agriculture actually provides all the raw material for industry. An example for that would be cotton textile industry. You all know that cotton is actually grown in the fields of Punjab, Maharashtra and many more states. Now, the amount of cotton grown or the agricultural productivity of cotton crop decides the amount of raw material that will be available to cotton textile industry. So if cotton is growing or the growth of cotton or the output of cotton crops is more, then raw material for the cotton textile industry would be more. Right. So industrial growth actually depends on the amount of raw material that is available to them and agriculture provides that raw material. So if agriculture is going on a downward path, then industry would also go on a downward path because of lack of availability of raw material. All right. Now we'll come to the second reason. The second reason is that the income that is earned by farmers through producing agricultural crops actually generates demand for industrial goods. Now, let's decode that. As you all know that rural areas, in rural areas, the dominant vocation or dominant profession is agriculture. Now, rural areas do not produce industrial goods. Industries are generally found in urban areas. So rural areas produce agricultural goods. But that doesn't mean that rural households do not require industrial goods. Various rural households, various farm households require TVs, fridges, microwave ovens and all sorts of industrial goods, right? So how do they get that, those industrial goods? Well, farmers actually grow crops and they sell those crops. The income earned by farmers actually generates demand for industrial goods and demand for industrial goods actually benefits these industries which are in urban areas. So if agriculture is going through a downward path, then agricultural income is going through a downward path. And if agricultural income is going through a downward path, then rural demand is going through a downward path. And if rural demand is going through a downward path, then industry suffers because rural demand actually is focused on industrial goods. So if agriculture is not growing, industry is not growing. Therefore, because of these two reasons, agriculture has a lot of bearing upon industry. Without agricultural growth, industry suffers. And without industrial growth, economy on the whole suffers. That is why 10th five-year plan realized that agriculture is the prime moving force of Indian economy. Make sense? Now, as you all know that because of COVID-19 pandemic, Indian economy is suffering heavily. We are going through a very bad phase. Now, government of India has decided to help the economy to revive itself, right? And therefore, government of India is actually focusing on various sectors of Indian economy to revive Indian economy. Make sense? Now, it would be foolish on the part of the government if it focuses on all the other sectors except agriculture. Right. And government realizes this fact. That is why the revival package or the stimulus package that the government released through Atmanirbhar Bharat actually focused on a lot of reforms for agriculture. In today's video, we'll be talking about those reforms. So in today's video for Arthonomic series, we'll be talking about the ordinances that the government has enacted to reform agricultural marketing. Now, why is agricultural marketing important for farmers? Well, farmers actually depend on the prices they get for their crops. Agricultural marketing is actually very important for farmers because 
through agricultural marketing, farmers get better prices for their crops. And if they don't get better prices, their incomes would decline. And if their incomes would decline, then you know the drill, right? Industrial de demand for industrial goods declines and then for uh, economy declines, right? Therefore, government's focus on agricultural mar marketing is actually hitting the nail on its head, right? Therefore, the government has enacted two ordinances and we'll be talking about those two ordinances in our video today. All right. So what will we cover in this video? First of all, we'll see current options available with farmers for marketing of their produce. As of now, before the two and before the enactment of these two ordinances, what options did the farmers had to market their produce? All right. Then we'll talk about problems faced by farmers with respect to agricultural marketing. Then we'll talk about the two ordinances that the government has enacted by the to reform agricultural marketing. And in the end, we'll talk about what benefits can farmers avail through these ordinances. How will farmers benefit out of these two ordinances? All right. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's start with current marketing options with the farmers. Currently, before the enactment of these two ordinances, farmers had various options, various ways through which they could sell their produce. Let's take a look at those various options. The first option available with farmer is that he could, he or she could sell his produce to mandis operated by APMC. Now you know about APMC, right? APMC full form is Agricultural Produce Marketing Committee. Now each state government actually enacts an APMC Act. As you all know that agriculture and agricultural marketing is a state subject. Therefore different states, Haryana, Punjab, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, all of them enact APMC Act. Through those acts, APMC is formed. Agricultural Produce Marketing Committee is formed. Now this committee actually registers and regulates various mandis, marketplaces. These registered mandis, which are regulated by APMC, actually buy produce from farmers. So farmers have this option of selling to mandis, which are regulated and operated by these statutory bodies, APMC, Agricultural Produce Marketing Committees, which are registered under yeah, which are formed under APMC Act of various state governments. All right. Now, if farmer doesn't want to sell through mandis or sell in mandis uh, operated by APMC, he could sell his produce in private mandis. These are mandis which are operated not by APMC, but they are operated by private individuals. These private individuals actually register themselves and get the license to operate a mandi, right? So these private mandis are also operational and farmer has the option of selling in those private mandis. Then the third option available to the farmer is that he could sell his produce to cold storages. Cold storage warehouses can register themselves as deemed markets. So these cold storage warehouses, how warehouses which have registered themselves as deemed markets, farmer can sell his or her produce in those cold storage areas. And the last option that is available to farmers is he could sell his produce to village aggregators. Now, we'll actually discuss this village aggregator uh, channel in detail. But let me tell you this, that this village aggregator channel is the most utilized form of market, most utilized marketing channel. Majority of the farmers in India, close to 50% of farmers in India actually utilize this channel. All right. Now, because 50 close to 50% of the farmers utilize this channel, let's take a look at this channel, this channel of village aggregators in detail. All right. All right. Now, let's suppose there is this farmer. Now, this farmer wants to sell his agricultural produce and he wants to earn some money out of it. Now, he has the option of selling his produce to a mandi regulated by APMC, right? So many farmers actually go to these mandis and sell their produce. Make sense, right? But here is the problem. Actually, majority of farmers in India do not have access to these mandis. Most of these mandis are in urban areas or in far off areas which do not have good road connectivity. So there are various small and marginal farmers who do not have access to these mandis. Farmers which have access to these mandis are generally large farmers, farmers which have access to knowledge about prices, farmers which have access to road connectivity. Look at these three points. Big farmers having links with mandi officials. Farmers having access to knowledge about prices. Farmers with access to road connectivity take uh, benefit or utilize this channel. So big farmers, farmers who are connected actually utilize this channel, but small and marginal farmers do not have access to these, this channel because they are not 
they do not have road connectivity they are not familiar with mandi officials they don't have links with mandi officials therefore small and marginal farmers suffer because this apmc channel isn't available to them so what these small and marginal farmers do is they sell their produce in their villages only in their village there is a there is a artia or there is a money lender or there is a village aggregator right he buys agricultural produce from all the farmers in his village and sells that produce to apmc nearby apmc mandi so what happens is because these small and marginal farmers do not have access to apmc mandi they sell their produce to their village aggregator this village aggregator buys at a certain price uh, agricultural produce from all the farmers in his villages he collects that produce he aggregates that produce and takes it to the mandi because this village aggregator is a big guy he's a big shot guy who has access and links to mandi officials he collects that produce and sells uh, that agricultural produce to apmc regulated mandi at a higher price now he buys at a lower price from farmers and sells at a higher price therefore he earns a certain commission out of it make sense right now this is known as the village aggregator channel and it is the most dominant form of village ag uh, most dominant form of marketing channel now let's take a look at these facts in the green box in more than 50% of the cases farmers are cheated by the aggregators how how can aggregators cheat farmers they can buy from farmers because these small and marginal farmers do not have knowledge about the market price right so these village aggregators can exploit farmers because of their lack of knowledge these village aggregators buy their produce at a very low price and sell it at a very high price plus aggregator gets his cut at the expense of farmer getting lower price right so because of this middleman this village aggregator farmers small and marginal farmers do not get higher price which is available to them in apmc mandi make sense right now let's get back to the four marketing channels that we were talking about earlier now as you all know that farmers have these four options apmc mandis private mandis cold storage warehouses and village aggregators and as you all know majority of the farmers or a large chunk significant chunk of farmers sell through village aggregators now in india dominant form of agricultural marketing is apmc mandi and village aggregators very few farmers utilize private mandis and very few farmers can utilize cold storage warehouses because they are far off right so the dominant form is apmc and village aggregators there are very few farmers who utilize private mandis all right now you might be thinking that only these four options are available to farmers farmers do not have other options well farmers do have other options available farmers do have other marketing channels available now because many farmers do not have access to apmc mandis government has stepped in and how has the government stepped in well if farmers can't if farmers are not getting good price on their produce then farmers can sell their produce to government as you all know that government has government uh, regularly announces msp minimum support price on rice and wheat so if there are farmers who uh, grow rice and wheat and they want to sell it at higher price they can sell it to the government government is ready to buy their produce at msp so this marketing channel which is regulated by the government is available to the farmers the other marketing channel that is available to farmers is direct marketing we'll discuss direct marketing in detail have some patience and the other marketing channel that is available to farmer is contract farming so apart from the four marketing channels that we discussed earlier these three marketing channels are also available to farmers government procurement direct marketing contract farming now farmers have access plus farmers have knowledge about government procurement but direct marketing and contract fa farming channel is not easily available to farmers farmers either lack knowledge about direct marketing or contract farming or aren't aware of these two marketing channels that's why these two marketing channels are not being utilized by farmers let's take a look at the two points in the blue box not easily available to farmers therefore government has come up with ordinances to promote these channels the two ordinances that we are talking about in this video are actually focus on direct marketing and contract farming because if farmers get more choices on their marketing channels there would be they would benefit out of it currently farmers have rare access to direct marketing or contract farming they don't have much access to it therefore the government is trying to promote government what the government is trying to do is government is trying to promote direct marketing and contract farming all right now you guys must be thinking what is direct marketing or contract farming let's take a look at them one by one what is direct marketing now the journey of agricultural products starts with the farmers and actually ends up with the final consumer so farmer produces agricultural products and then these agricultural products start on a journey till they reach the final consumer 
This journey of farm produce is known as the supply chain. And in this supply chain, farm produce passes through various processes and hands of various middlemen. Middlemen means like village aggregators are middlemen, artiyas or uh, wholesalers at agricultural mandis or APMC mandis are middlemen. So there are various middlemen. All the people who handle your farm produce from farmer to final consumer are known as the middlemen. All right. Now, longer the supply chain, higher the number of middlemen. And these middlemen don't work for free. They charge a certain commission for their job. Therefore, can I say that if the number of middlemen in a supply chain increases, the final price paid by the consumer also increases? Makes sense, right? As a matter of fact, to increase their profits, these middlemen pay less to a farmer and charge a higher price to the farmer consume, a final consumer. Therefore, for the benefit of the consumers and farmers, agricultural supply chain should be short, crisp and efficient because the lo because longer the supply chain, higher the profits of these middlemen or the number of middlemen increases. And if the number of middlemen increases, farmers get less for their produce and final consumers have to pay a higher price because that's the only way through which these middlemen could increase their profits. Make sense? Now, therefore, we need to shorten the supply chain, make it more efficient, short and crisp. One solution to this problem is direct marketing. What happens in a direct marketing? Well, in direct marketing, farmers directly sell their produce to final consumers without going through a supply chain, without going through a channel of middlemen. There are various direct marketing mandis where consumers can directly buy from farmers. These mandis are known as direct marketing channels. So what is direct marketing? When farmers do not utilize the supply chain, when, when farmers do not utilize the supply chain and they sell their produce directly to the final consumer. This is known as direct marketing. All right. Now, what are the advantages of direct marketing? Well, because there are no middlemen, farmers get a better price. Because there are no middlemen, consumers have to pay a lower price. And because there are no middlemen, the supply chain is very efficient because the supply chain consists of no middlemen after all. Make sense? Now you guys know what direct marketing is. So let's take a look at contract farming. All right. Now the biggest challenge faced by farmers in India is price stability or price predictability. Actually, before sowing their crops, farmers have little idea about what the market price would be when their crop is ready to be harvested. There are various examples, various examples in India where price stability has been a problem for farmers. In these examples, market prices went so low at the time of harvest that farmers couldn't even cover their input cost. Now, if farmers had any idea about such a situation beforehand, they would not have grown that particular crop and would have grown some other crop, right? Therefore, what the price of a particular crop would be in future or at particularly at the time of harvest is very important for farmers. Farmers need to be, need to be assured that they will get a good price in future. Now, to help farmers from such a situation, government steps in. What government does is for certain crops, government declares a minimum support price before the sowing season. So before sowing of a particular crop, farmer knows that what price it will get of that for that produce if it sells that produce to the government. So if a farmer decides to sell that produce at minimum support price, he can he or she can sell that produce to Food Corporation of India. So through MSP and through Food Corporation of India, government provides price predictability to farmers. Farmers are given the price of their produce before sowing of that crop. All right. There is another way out. If government doesn't help the farmers, farmers have another option. And that option is contract farming. Contract farming actually provides the price predictability, the required price predictability and price stability, which the farmer seeks. If farmer goes the uh, goes through the route of contract farming, he or she will get a stable he, he or she will get a stable price. All right. Now let's understand contract farming through an example. Let's suppose there is a potato farmer, right? He wants to sell his potatoes to anyone who wants to buy it at a good price. Now there is this company which sells potato chips. Let's suppose Lay's or Kurkure or whatever, right? Now this particular company, this particular, let's call that particular company a food processor because food processors buy potatoes and convert them into chips and sell them off. Right. So this food processor requires a requires a batch of good quality potatoes. Right. Now, this food processor will seek potato farmer. Right. Now, what happens is this farmer requires price predictability and this food processor requires assurance that he will be delivered with a batch of good quality potatoes at a particular time in future. So what this farmer and food processor do is they get into a contract in that contract. The date of delivery would be mentioned. 
the final price would be mentioned the quality would be mentioned right and the type of potatoes that have to be delivered would be mentioned so farmer and this particular food processor or the buyer would uh, would enter into a contract now entering into a contract is beneficial for this farmer why because this farmer will get assurance of a particular price if this farmer delivers a particular batch of potatoes which is of a particular quality and what is the advantage of this food advantage for this food processor he will he is assured of a delivery he is assured of delivery of go, uh, a batch of good quality potatoes right so in that contract what what are the details that are going to be mentioned what is pre decided in the contract the price that is going to be paid to the farmer is decided uh, is uh, mentioned the quantity and quality of produce is mentioned date of sale is mentioned right now how is farmer benefiting out of it the farmer is assured of the price now if market price of potato falls in the future this buyer will have to buy at a price which was decided in the contract irrespective of the market price the price would irrespective of the market price this food processor or this buyer would have to buy potatoes from this farmer at a decided pre decided price which was mentioned in the contract so this farmer is assured of uh, the price he will get for his potatoes beforehand right now contract farming is not that prevalent in india and that is why government of india has come up with ordinances the ordinance that would help contract farming or that would help farmers getting into contract farming right so contract farming and msp regime provides farmer with the much required price predictability and stability all right let's take a look at the advantages that are offered by contract farming how would farmers benefit from contract farming let's take a look at that the advantages are written in the green box let's take a look at these advantages one by one first of all contract farming would provide price predictability for farmers then second is better price realization farmers would get a better price because they can negotiate with the food processor or the buyer then there is few scope for middlemen there are no middlemen right there is no supply chain after all farmer is directly selling his produce to a food processor or a buyer under the contract so supply chain is more efficient then this contract farming would give a boost to food processing sector then risk mitigation for farmers because farmers are not running high risk the risk is run by food processor right farmers are assured of a particular or a fixed return farmers know what price they will get so they are they are they don't care about what the market price of that particular crop would be right so farmers risk is covered farmers get assured returns and quality standardization happens which is important for food processor so these are the advantages that are offered by contract farming all right so now you know what direct marketing is now you know what contract farming is let's take a look at the two ordinances that the government has offered or the government has enacted to help contract farming and direct marketing let's take a look at the ordinance that helps direct marketing this the name of this ordinance is the farming produce trade and commerce promotion and facilitation ordinance 2020 now there are chances that this ordinance would be converted into an act so the name of this ordinance would remain the same except the fact that ordinance would be replaced by act all right now let's take a look at this ordinance there are four or five points that you need to know about this ordinance it aims to open up agricultural marketing outside the notified mandi notified mandi would be apmc mandi for farmers it will also remove barriers for interstate trade any farmer with a pan card will be able to sell his produce outside the notified mandi that is a farmer with a pan card is not forced to sell his produce in a uh, apmc mandi he can directly sell his produce to a consumer that's what direct marketing is right thus opening channels for direct marketing this will allow farmers more choices it will raise his income and reduce wastage and improve quality farmers are farmers would get more um, farmers are getting more choices like right before this farmers had only few choices farmers could sell their produce to a government through at msp or farmers were forced to sell their produce to a village aggregator or apmc mandi now farmers have the option of direct marketing the more the number of choices better it is for farmers right it will increase farmers income because there are no middlemen involved so farmers would get a better price wastage is reduced quality is improved all right the ordinance that is there that is enacted by the government for contract farming the name of that ordinance is the farmers empowerment and protection agreement on price assurance and farm services ordinance 2020 this is aimed at facilitating contract farming the buyer contracts to purchase a crop at a certain price at the beginning of the season before sowing season 
transferring the risk of market unpredictability from the farmer to the corporate sponsor right so the risk of market unpredictability the risk of prices falling in the market is now shifted from the farmer all right now while both agriculture and agricultural marketing are state subjects that is agriculture and agricultural marketing are mentioned in the state list which means that only state legislatures are empowered to enact a law on this but this this particular ordinance or these particular these two ordinances are enacted by center right while both agriculture and agricultural marketing are state subjects the center is counting on the fact that trade and commerce in food stuff is a part of concurrent list all right agriculture and agricultural marketing are part of uh, state list so only state governments are empowered to enact ordinances but because trade and commerce in food stuff is a part of uh, concurrent list therefore now center is also empowered to enact these two ordinances right so center is utilizing trade and commerce and foodstuffs to push through this ordinance all right you need to remember this fact that agriculture and agricultural marketing is a part of state list and trade and commerce and foodstuffs is a part of concurrent list all right this is the whole basis of these two ordinances clear so that's it from my side guys I I hope you understood each and everything about it. One thing I require from you guys is that I want to pose you a question. My question to you is what are the advantages of these two ordinances especially from the viewpoint of the farmer? Please write the advantages of these two ordinances in the comment section below. I want to know that you understood this topic completely. Therefore I will be eagerly waiting for your answers in the comment section below. All right? And plus if you have any doubts then please write those write those doubts in the comment section below too. All right. So that's it from my side guys. I'll see you next time with more videos on economy. Thank you.